Welcome back to the weekend wrap. No production, just my thoughts. As always, please like and subscribe and share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an associate, an enemy, and anyone in between. It's all appreciated. There was quite a bit of action on this weekend, to be totally honest. Um, no US cars, which was cool because it meant that I didn't have to necessarily stay up for those, although I was up watching other sports, if you want to call it that. Maybe sports entertainment is probably the <laughs> most correct uh, terminology to use. But that being said, uh, quickly, Friday, big congrats to Dina Thorslin for unifying the bantamweight division. She is now the unified WBC and WBO uh, bantamweight champion. Um, Nina Hughes has the WBA title and Ebony Bridges has the IBF. So hopefully they can get that unification on at some point so that um, you can get a full undisputed going, going ahead. Um, probably, to, I guess, the middle of 2024 at this point. Also, um, we had Lyndon Arthur taking the IBO world title away from Brian Suarez in, what was it? It was a... 10th round, yeah, it was a 10th round KO via body shot, via really horrible liver shot. Now, interestingly enough, like, it, when you watch it in real time, the shot didn't even look hard. It, it didn't look like there was any power on it, any torque. Like, it didn't really look like he twisted his body into it. It almost just looked like a tap. And then, yeah, Suarez just kind of went tried to go over the top tried to throw his own shot over the top that one missed and then he just grimaced in pain and was just out for the count on the floor now the whole fight itself um you know without going into too much details it started fairly controlled by Lyndon Arthur but then he ended up getting caught in an exchange in the third round fourth round and um Whereas I had a Suarez winning the first uh, after sort of controlling uh, rounds two and three. And then, yeah, the fourth round happened where Lyndon Arthur got caught in an exchange, got dropped to a knee, um, and then basically was kind of backpedaling, surviving for the rest of that round and the subsequent fifth round. After that point, while he was still um, sort of having to survive and tuck up for, for Suarez, Suarez started to throw a bit more arm punches at this point. So like his his gas tank was starting to drain a little bit, but he was just on top D, just a pressure fighter, just winning the rounds. Um, and there was no round up until coming towards the the tenth that I'd actually given to Arthur minus rounds two and three. So he was just really under the cosh and yeah, pulled as as they say, like you know that winning mentality. You pull victory from the jaws of defeat. And he certainly did that. So big congrats to him. Now, I was watching um, Antwi versus Cartwright, although I think I ended up falling asleep like around about the very last couple of rounds. So I actually missed the, uh, the standing knockout in real time. But I've subsequently obviously seen all the comments and the reaction around it. And yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to breaking that down on Tuesday. Uh, if we move over into Saturday really quick, um, I don't remember every single fight that was on the card, um, the pay-per-view card, which was Smith Eubank 2. I remember Lauren Price versus Lolita Mazeo. Um, There was a horrendous head clash that happened in the, I think it was the seventh round or the eighth round. That, no, I think it happened in the eighth. And um, yeah, no, it happened in the seventh they tried to stem the blood in the eighth. It basically didn't work. So it got put to technical decision whereby Lauren Price ended up winning the fight, which everyone I think expected her to do. Um, was what it was. Uh, Florian Marku, I mean, I said that I thought he would win a majority decision against Dylan Moran. Um, he blew that one out of the water and ended up winning a first round KO. I think it was about 52 seconds or supposedly, something like that. Um, I mean, look, yeah, there's only one fight for him next. As much as he might want to be looking at world champions or whatnot, whatnot, it's got to be that Chris Congo fight. Like they've they've already got the backstory there from the from the Bawazi Aziz press conference. It makes perfect sense that that's where you that's where you go. But I've noticed that Florian Marku has a habit of like putting his hands on people in close spaces. 
that generally speaking is is a trait of nerves to kind of you know i guess push people and he does it quite often like he does it in in moments and times where like the person's not even in an aggressive manner it's just i don't know it's either bully tactics or it's nerves masking as bully tactics it's one or the other but um yeah i'd like to see the chris congo fight i won't say who i think wins until that fight gets announced but i definitely would like to see it there's a little bit of a built-in story there uh what else was on the card there was um michaela mayer against uh, sylvia bortot again i thought you know michaela she she suckered me and i had a, i thought that she would be able to put some punches together she'd be able to put a little more mustard on those punches you know being 12 pounds heavier than what she normally weighs and no there's just still nothing there even in round sort of seven and eight where you know sylvia bought was visibly looking like the the body punches are wearing wearing on her a little bit Subsequently, there was a several times when the referee did tell Michaela Mayer, nope, get those punches up, they're, they're becoming low. Um, yeah, you could see that Bortop was visibly gassed, but Michaela just didn't have the power to be able to step on the gas, I suppose. It's, um, I don't know, her against, um, her against Natasha Jonas it would be a very interesting fight, because one thing I do know is Natasha does have that power that you're going to respect um so i think that one even though they're both boxers that is definitely the boxer versus the puncher in terms of dynamic uh so yeah they they both spoke about it after after the fact so they uh, you know that looks like that would be the fight to make next so hopefully we get there next up there was the um mark heffron and um little levers meek levers jack cullen and i got that one i thought that I thought that one would go to points because they've known each other for so long. Uh, they've sparred so many rounds before that they would kind of be cagey with each other. And I felt like Heffron would have the best, better of like first kind of three rounds. And then um, Cullen will sort of, sort of start to come into it after that. But Heffron will nick rounds here and there and possibly win that fight via a split decision especially with Heffron being a, a Queensbury fighter on you know from TNT Sports going on to a Sky Sports show wasn't really sure if he'd get the rub but he was the you know he was the the Commonwealth was he British and Commonwealth champion yeah so you'd think that he would kind of get the considerations as the quote-unquote A-side well uh, Jack Holland decided to um, yeah he ripped up that script and he made a a liar out of me <laughs> but it was it was a good one um it was a third round ko it was a devastating check hook um which yeah f1 just didn't see didn't brace for he got up too early initially um used the rope to try and steady himself he was woozy he tried to take two steps and he fell back to the floor referee waved it off and colin is the new british and commonwealth champion so congrats to him <laughs> be interesting to see what he does next but um yeah all good then we had fraser clark versus david allen um oof. yeah <laughs> that's that's about as much as i can say like okay dave allen you, you know to yourself all right he's going to try and weather the storm a little bit and he's going to try and just throw a couple of hell you know sort of hell mary shots here and there now to be fair to fraser he was boxing quite well in the first round in the first and the second round and all of a sudden he keeps collapsing the pocket to start hugging um anytime dave allen would get anywhere close rather than you know sort of trying to either work on the inside or or trying to separate get that distance and you know work behind the jab being the bigger taller man there's just they're just hugging on the inside of the on the inside of the, the inside it just looked it was just a, a lackluster fight from both. A couple of times where, you know, Dave Allen threw an overhand right or a, 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 like a leaping left, which maybe caught or grazed Frazier, but it wasn't a huge amount. Frazier was throwing a lot of body shots and in, and in fact, uh, several low body shots. He had two points deducted in the sixth round for, for body shots, but there was, I mean, for, for low blows, I should say, but there was other um low blows that 
he threw before then that David Allen was complaining about that either the ref didn't actually see or maybe he just he paused it and said look keep it up so at that point once those two points went I thought to myself oof and he went back down there he went back down to that region again I thought this he could end up getting himself disqualified he could foul out of this fight and he's totally in control so it would make no sense to do so but in the sixth round I think he pulled it he, he, he hit Dave Allen with um I think there was a straight I think it was a straight right and then like a loop a looping right behind the back of the guard which caught Dave Allen on the side of the head and I think apparently that perforated his eardrum so at the end of the sixth round I guess he told the corner either he couldn't hear he couldn't see it wasn't didn't really feel to go on and they ultimately stopped the fight in the sixth round so um yeah Frazier Clark got sixth round KO and the team I know Dave Allen's team was saying that they, you know, they'd be looking for a rematch because obviously the illegal shots and whatnot. He won't get one. And to be honest, as bad as the fight was, I don't think anyone wants to see it again. So yeah, that's not happening. Move on, and it is what it is. On to the uh, chief support, which is Adam Mazin versus um, Aaron Fanyan. Now, this was actually a good fight for for Adam Azim he didn't he wasn't able to have it his own way I did think that he would um I predicted that it would he would either get like a, a UD or he would sort of get a late stoppage like around about round nine um nine or ten it went the distance there was a couple of times Fanyan did look like he was feeling the power feeling the pace towards the the back end but in that whole first half of the fight he had he had Azim sort of not holstered, but he had him, you know, questioning when was the right time to throw those shots. So Azim got a good a good ten rounds in there, especially after obviously the little inactivity with the hand injury. He's sort of back fighting fit. If knowing them he'll probably get another fight towards uh, the end of November and that should see him out for the rest of the year. But he's still moving along well. Um he's still backing out sort of straight lines chins up in the air a little bit he's relying too much on the reflexes as opposed to a good defense and that could pose issues later on down the line but they are trying to move him fast and i guess you keep taking those acid tests we'll see where we get to now moving on to the main event i did get this one i predicted that chris eubank jr would win however he my prediction was that he would either win a split decision or he'd get a very late stoppage. But I did say rounds 11 to 12. So he got it in the 10th. So neither of those was technically correct, apart from the fact that I did predict for him to win. Now, when I also predicted he'd get a split decision, I thought that Liam Smith would do a lot better, especially in the first half of the fight, than, um, than what we saw. I did make mention in the preview video of the back being a potential issue and lo and behold after the fight we start hearing oh well the back injury made me meant that I had to cut a lot more weight than usual like he said they had to cut 42 pounds for the for the fight I'm sorry but even though I can I was given grace for the back to say if he starts getting jostled and roughed about in the fight they could you know stop his fluidity and stop his mobility which there definitely looked like there wasn't much mobility there to be totally honest but if you had to drop 42 pounds because you had this back injury and you decided just to eat out the entire fridge that's your own fault so in terms of be feeling flat and not having anything because you had a hard weight cut that's your own that's your own business now i did say prior that I, he didn't look um i said you bet looked a lot better on the scales than he did last time even last time i didn't think he looked that bad but he looked a lot better this time and he looked a lot better than, than liam smith so yeah um in terms of that as an excuse i mean yeah it can be an excuse it can be a valid reason as to why you didn't perform but ultimately that's your own fault so i didn't really want to hear that uh, if we're being totally honest but chris eubank was a punch perfect performance won every single round there was not 10 to 15 seconds of any round that Liam Smith won that Chris Eubank literally controlled the fight from the first round to the round when it was stopped in the 10th and it wasn't competitive it wasn't close 
Now, speaking of which, um, and I'm giving Chris full full praise here, but ultimately, I did mention the back and everything before the fight, so I can't now not mention it afterwards. I had a feeling it would be a factor, and ultimately, the excuse came that it was a factor because it made making weight a lot harder. And clearly, they didn't want to push the fight back further because they were running the risk of losing that fight. Now, here's my thing. And if I'm wrong about this, please put in the comments any ones I've missed. But from what I can remember, there's been three pay-per-view fights on Sky Sports. Um, so there was Amir Khan versus Kell Brook. There was uh, Eubank Smith and then Smith Eubank too. Now, if there's any others, please put them down because those are the only three I can remember. Now, is it just me or is every fight card, every pay-per-view fight card that Sky have put on had a very disappointing main event? So in um, Amir Khan versus Kell Brook, it was basically a one-sided beating for, what was it, six rounds that it lasted. In the Smith... You in the first Eubank Smith fight, there was not a huge amount happening, and then all of a sudden there was like you know one flashpoint in the fourth round, and it's over before it really got going. So again, it wasn't it wasn't an entertaining fight. It was it ended dramatically. It had a dramatic end to it, and then this one was just again a one sided beating with someone that we've now heard was basically injured and shouldn't have gone into the fight. So. Is it just me that's noticing that Sky Sports and Boxer seem to be just putting on these lacklustre pay-per-views where there's a huge and there's a great build-up, but like the fights that they're actually putting on just aren't delivering. And I'm not even talking about the undercards because, you know, we, for the most part, we're, we're going for these main events. But I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, well, hold on. How is it that none of these fights seem to be competitive, but we're paying for them? Like, that. So yeah, it might be a great atmosphere on inside the arena, but like there's just nothing here. Now, and I don't even say I wouldn't even put it on the same, um, you know, sort of the same level as like say Spence versus Crawford, because ultimately, me personally, I always said that fight wasn't going to be competitive. Terence Crawford was going to, you know, was going to expose Spence. I always said that Spence was overrated and overhyped. That was something that I've said for years. But that doesn't necessarily mean that even I, I knew it was going to be, you know, a, a dominant performance, but even I didn't expect it to be as dominant as it was. But on all of these ones, it's like, well, no, you feel like there should be 50-50 fights. There should be some controversy. There should be some intrigue. There should be some back and forth where you're like, oh, he's got him. No, he's got, he's come back. He's rallied back. None of these fights, they, they was all just like lackluster in their execution. So, I don't know, it's food for thought. Maybe you give me your opinion and let me know what you think about that. But I'm, it's just weird. I've noticed that all of their box office fights, just, there's no, yeah, there's just, there's just nothing to them. Like, the build-ups are amazing and you get invested and you, you're like, oh yeah, I can't, really can't wait to watch this one. And then the fight happens and it's just one-sided or it's just extremely lacklustre and just nothing, nothing changes. So, they've got to do better in that sense. Yeah, they want to keep talking about, well, you know, they've got the new fresh stable and they're still kind of finding their feet and blah, 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 but... Yeah, it's, this is where you then have to start outsourcing, you know, just, I don't know, I, maybe I'm reading too much into it, mate, like I said, you guys can let me know in the comments below if I'm, if I'm being a bit overcritical on that side, but I've just found that, you know, ultimately I've paid, what, 60 to 65 pounds for all three of their shows thus far. And there's not one of them that I've come away with feeling like, yeah, that was money well spent. Um, but hey, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just being overcritical. If I am, then apologies. But yeah, uh, I think I pretty much leave it there. There's not really much else to, to address. Um, it is what it is. Like Chris Eubank wrote the wrongs that I predicted he would. Um, 
like I said, I did feel like it would either be um, split decision or late stoppage. He got the late stoppage, so to speak. So, yeah, all good. I made a little bit of money of it last night. Not a huge amount, but enough, which was fine. So, yeah. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these. Um, I do know in my predictions league, I, oof, I'm i probably going to be close to the bottom this week. I know that in terms of, because it's not just who won. Like I got most of my picks right, minus one of them. But it's the methods of the victory that you get all the points for. And my methods were horrible this, this week. So yeah, I don't want to see that. Um, I'm already going to give a big salute to Nick, who's probably watching now. Um, Nick Harmer, I'm almost certain he, he must be near the top. He always is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a bad week in that sense. But I know... Uh, both G-Man and Ade and most other people all picked Liam Smith so at least I got the one up on them this week so we'll take that but yeah please like and subscribe um, more videos coming throughout the week and I will catch you on the next one but thank you for watching peace